In the 1940s, bus transportation was everywhere in the United States, and the Greyhound bus station in Evansville was a busy hub of transit activity. In its prime, around 100 buses per day went through the station. Construction on the building began in 1938, and it opened in 1939. The final cost of construction was at $150,000, which is just around $2.5 million today. The station was built in the footprint of the old Cadic Theater at 3rd and Sycamore Street. That skeleton, the steel superstructure on top of the brick and concrete foundation and some of the underlayment stood there for about 17 years. Uh, and numerous times over that 17 years, new plans were announced for something to go there. You know, the depression happened in, uh, after the stock market crash in 1929, so there was not a lot of money for investment. But over the years, there were, I think, two or three uh, companies that came in and were going to try and resurrect the project, but it never happened. So the site was sold to the Greyhound uh, bus line. The same unique curved shape of the theater was kept and incorporated into the now iconic architecture of the Greyhound building. The station was constructed in art modern style highlighted with a futuristic facade and a horizontal focus, complete with what is now one of the last remaining neon Greyhound signs with the running Greyhound logo at the top. There was once a 24-hour diner inside the station, which added to the importance of the establishment and aided in its nonstop service. One balcony for men and another for women overlooked the main waiting area where travelers could sit and wait for their bus in between trips. Buses sat in the parking lot behind the station, refueling and regrouping before carrying more passengers across the nation. In its prime, the station was a well-known staple of the community. Soon, however, with the rise of airplanes and personal automobiles, the need for bus transit dropped. With the decline in business, the idea of abandoning the station was tossed around by many people in the Greyhound Corporation. If the station were to be abandoned, Greyhound would move what little operation it had left to a different location in Evansville. Luckily, the decision was made to stay for the time being and not totally abandon the station just yet. A renovation in 1987 was initiated to give the station a more modern look. Sadly, it destroyed the historic beauty and architecture that made the station so unique. Gone with the original beauty are features like the 24-hour diner and the balconies that overlook the main waiting area, which were covered up by a drop ceiling. The financially struggling corporation also drastically reduced the number of buses that went through the station daily. In 2007, the Greyhound Corporation finally moved out of the building for good, and the future of the station was unknown and in jeopardy. Since the building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places and universally recognized as one of the best examples of art modern architecture in the state of Indiana, the city made it a priority for acquisition. The Evansville Recommission Board approved a transfer in March of 2013 that allowed the city of Evansville to take ownership. Realizing the immense amount of potential for a developer to revitalize the building, the city of Evansville enlisted the Indiana Landmarks Organization to help with a much needed restoration, but this restoration would be different than the previous. The goal this time was to restore the original beauty that was lost in the 1987 renovation and bring a sense of community togetherness into downtown Evansville. Well, the building is being restored because it's one of the very few left in the nation. Uh, it's probably one of the only ones almost left with the still the running dog on the blade sign out front. So it's very important in Indiana landmarks to see this building saved. Uh, of course, you know, as you're aware, it's sat here since 2007 empty. Uh, and we acquired the building in 2013 and started the exterior restoration at that point in time. The exterior of the building was the first focus. The blue tiles were removed and the original brick was coated in a black protective seal that would preserve the building for years to come. After the coating was applied, the majority of the original tiles were refurbished and put back on the building. Lead paint and asbestos were removed and conditions were brought up to coat. The renovation also included installing a new roof, rebuilding the gutters, window work, repairing doors, getting electrical lines up to coat, and most notably, restoring and repairing the iconic neon sign. The interior of the building was gutted, removing all of the 80s renovation and revealing some of the original architecture and beauty. The plaster walls were repaired from years of water damage. Other repairs include the wood trim, the flooring, and replacement of the heating and cooling systems. On June 18, 2015, Indiana Landmarks hosted an ice cream social open to the public at the station to celebrate the official relighting of the iconic Greyhound sign. 
That night, hundreds of people gathered on the corner of Northwest 3rd and Sycamore Streets to witness the historic event firsthand. On October 13th of 2015, the city of Evansville and Indiana Landmarks made an announcement regarding the future of the station. It was revealed after much anticipation that the new tenant of the building would be the Indianapolis-based restaurant Brew Burgers. I have to tell you, last week we were in Indianapolis to make our regional cities uh, pitch. We're asking for $42 million from the state of Indiana. We went to Brew Burger on Mass Ave to eat, and I can tell you, the mayor gives it two thumbs up. So, uh, with that. Indiana Landmarks will team up with the well-respected Cunningham Restaurant Group, which owns a variety of restaurants in Indiana, Illinois, and Kentucky. Indiana Landmarks originally sent out advertising brochures to many different restaurants and companies. However, according to Indiana Landmarks board member Gene Warren, Mike Cunningham and Brew Burgers was an obvious first choice. We sent uh, brochures uh, regarding the bus station to more than 60 restaurant prospects. Nashville, Indianapolis, uh, Louisville, Evansville, uh, and we, about that same time after those information packets went out, came to realize that Mike Cunningham was our first choice uh, with uh, his concept and with the fact that he appreciates historic buildings and prefers to go into historic buildings in the Indianapolis, uh, uh, central Indiana area, we felt that it would be a great fit here. The addition of this restaurant not only ensures a future to the Greyhound building, but it also adds momentum to the economic growth of the downtown area. Well, the water will bring people downtown. That's, uh, that's, Evansville has really been picking up lately, but uh, there is a lot of emptiness still in the downtown. So this will be a, a big move in the right direction to get people and vitality. And the more people you have, the greater critical mass you have of either the restaurants or people the more it starts to spread. So we think this will be a catalyst for a lot more to, to develop. Mayor Lloyd Wenicke sees this as progress that will go well with the IU Medical School and the Convention Hotel. I think the addition of Brewburger to the historic Greyhound building is just another, uh, another piece of the puzzle. It, it, I think it's an indication that downtown is on the right track and the entire city is on the right track. So I think with the, the fact that we're going to break ground on the medical school uh, October 23rd, construction of the hotel is underway. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, in downtown Evansville right now. Downtown is becoming uh, a destination more and more, and so this is another good, good piece of the puzzle. With the historic past and undeniable significance, the future of the Greyhound building is bright.